Our first topic today will be about the gravitational constant. Last week, I did a video on how we can make calculations using the gravitational constants, the law of universal gravity. And the whole idea here is that one person asked me, how do we get the, the value of the uh, gravitational constant? So I figured I would do some calculations with you to answer that question. And it's something that I've enjoyed researching for you. So first of all, we know that the, when we are on Earth here and we are humans on Earth, the Earth is attracting us through gravity. So gravity is something important. Second, we had a scientist in the past. His name was Isaac Newton. And let's see, he was, uh, so Isaac Newton in the 1700s did this formula here, his second law of, and it says that the, the force equals the mass times the acceleration on that mass. So that's the first thing. Second, uh, on top of that, we often remember him with the apple falling down from the tree, figure out that the, with experimentations, he could figure out that the energy, the, the gravitational acceleration at the surface of the Earth was 9.8 meters per second. Now, interestingly enough, when we think of forces, we can also rewrite it as 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So here is information that we got from Isaac Newton. On top of that, we have another scientist, maybe half a decade later, he was looking at the astronomy and he came up with the first value of g here, the gravitational constant. So here, the other equation is f equals g times the mass of the Earth times the mass here of the human over the radius square. So I know that the Isaac Newton had mentioned that the force was always with respect to the mass of the objects over the radius square. It was a proportional, uh, a proportional uh, relation, but he did not know what G was all about. So Cavendish here at some point decided to say, okay, let's see if I can do an experiment and let's see what he came up with. Perfect, so he did an experiment and his experiment looked something like this. So this is from science demonstrations from Harvard University. So here he had two large lead ball. They were about 167 kilograms. And then he had here a, a, a stick with two other masses right here, dangling here over a fiber. What is interesting on this fiber, he put a mirror. And then, so if you have here a, 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 a ray of light going in and it reflects on the mirror, if there's some torsion, so some movement on the fiber here, some rotation, what happens is that the reflection of the, the light will move. And looking at the angle, he was able to come up with uh, the forces and had his first understanding of what this universal gravitational constant would be. So his number, let's go back here, his number was 6.75 times 10 to the power of negative 11 Newton meter square kilogram square. So this is what he came up with. As we progressed, scientists were able to look at other data and we confirmed that number to about 1% in accuracy. So let's see what other scientists noticed. First of all, when you have a lunar eclipse, we have the sun, we have the earth going between the sun and the moon and we realized that the, the Earth was a sphere. And through that, they were able, and through other experimentation, to figure out what was the, ra the radius of our planet. And the radius is about 6,371 kilometers. Through studies of what would be the mass of our Earth from the information we had, they were measuring the mass of basalts, which is the, the most dense uh, rock on the planet, looking at the, the fact that basalts would have all the heavy minerals, heavy atoms, ions, and so on, they figured that the mass of the Earth was 5.972 times 10 to the power of 24. So even if here we had a variation in mass of, I don't know, 
a few million kilograms, billions of kilograms, trillions of kilograms, it would not change very much the mass of the Earth as we know it. So here the calculations we do would say, well, it is quite precise. How do we know for sure? It is based on the estimate of the radius of Earth and the estimate of the mass of Earth, knowing that given the large numbers, even if it changes a little bit by a percent, overall, it gives us a good number. So let's see what we come up. We can come up with the equations. So first of all, we have this idea. Let's see if I can get a good marker. We have here F equals M times A from Isaac, uh, Isaac Newton. But since we're talking about gravity and planets, we're going to have here the gravitational acceleration. And here, that would be, so here we have the, the mass of the human, the mass of the object at the surface of the planet. Now, we know that through the second formula, G times the mass of Earth times the mass, the mass of the human over the radius where the humus, the human or the mass is at the surface of the planet. So here, through this, we can figure out through deductions, what is the value of G right here? I know that in when we do you answer questions in your textbooks and in class, they will give you that number. But where is that number from? This is what this activity here is all about. Knowing that we have the mass of the human here and the mass of the human there, like this one here, we can cancel out that part of the equation, which is good because the gravity of a plant of the gravity on an object here or here on the surface of the planet, it's not in relationship of the object here, but the mass of the Earth here, which is right here. But we already know the number. So let's see if we can rearrange that a little bit because we're looking for G right here. So if I have here, if you divide by R squared here, you multiply on the other side. So let's see, G equals gravitational acceleration times the radius square. And here, if you multiply by the mass of the Earth, you will divide by the mass of Earth. So let's see if we can plug in some numbers. 9.8 Newton kilograms times the radius. So the radius here needs to be in meters. So we have 6.371 times 10 to the sixth meter. This needs to be square, and this is over the mass of Earth, which is 5.972 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms like this. Now, from here, we have all numbers here. All we have to do is do our calculations. So let's see if we can actually simplify this a little bit. If I have here a number that is square, let's see if we can change it a little bit. So we have here 9.8 Newton kilograms times, and if you put 6.371 times 10 to the power of 6 square, we have, so I use a quick calculator, and I have this number. So I have 40.5896. So I did this number square times this number square. So when you have a power of 6, Square is 10 to the power of 12 meter square here over 5.972 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Can you still see that? Perfect. Now, here there's a few things we can do. First of all, we can do the multiplication with the, the numbers that are this one here, this one here, and this one here. And this is equal to 66.61 times 10 to the 1. We have here 10 to the power of 12 divided by 10 to the power of 24. 12 minus 24 is negative 12. 12. Here we have Newton. We have meter square over kilogram over kilogram, kilogram square. So here we have the right units. That's what we were working on. Now here, I'm looking for a number between 1 and 9.9 .9 because we want to have um, a sign, uh, let's see, um, 
scientific notation. So if I have the point here and I move it one step this way, from negative 12, I go to negative 11. So the answer here is 6.661 times 10 to negative 11 Newton meter square kilogram square. And this will be the value of G. Now, the, the actual value that people are using when they do calculation is 6.67, and very close here, times 10 to negative 11, knowing that this number, that is more or less the number accepted. So we have, let's put it this way. I was answering questions for students last week, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Here, Newton meter square over kilogram square. This is the number that we're using. Whereas this is the number that uh, here we have Henry Cavendish that found out in the 1700s. You can see that it was very close. It was within 1% of error. And I think this is quite nice. So the reason why I did this calculation is to show you that we can actually find the value of a constant given the other values. And this is usually a constant, the gravitational constant that is given to you when we do uh, work. So I did the reverse work. It was a question that a student asked me this week, and I figured that I would do so. Actually, it was a student and someone from the audience that was not quite sure how to do this. And I had to go and do some, some algebra, some calculations, and I think I've enjoyed that. On this, if you've enjoyed this video, um, please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel. If you have any clarification questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. And guess what? I'm going to put here a link to another video, the video where there's calculations using this equation up right here. You'll see you will enjoy. So I will see you in this video in a moment.